Hello, welcome back to the primer 2 of the primer series on ICTD for youth. We are now on session 4. In the next slides, we'll be discussing the detailed planning phase of the project. After discussing and learning about this session, it is hoped that you will be able to explain the process of preparing a detailed project plan, describe disciplines and knowledge areas included in a project plan, understand the efficiency of using planning techniques and templates in preparing a project plan. To have a project plan, it requires, it requires specific and detailed preparation for the project implementation phase. The plans must be measurable and consistent to the objectives and goals of the project. Planning must be consultative process. Without the joint inputs from all stakeholders, important issues may be missed or overlooked. Clear and detailed planning can save time, money, and temper during project implementation. Project management demands a lot of documentation and reporting from the project manager and the project team. Project management methods and approaches offer templates that can help project management and the project team. It is efficient to plan and use document templates to save time for the project manager and the project team. Project planning covers the categories and the disciplines of scope, schedule, cost, procurement, quality, human resource, stakeholder, communication, risk, and overall management. While well, all of these categories are concerns of the project manager, the baseline categories of scope, time, and cost must be watched out at all times, especially during project implementation. In other project types like ICT projects, quality is also considered a baseline constraint for planning and monitoring. This means that quality will have to be given equal attention as the other triple constraints of scope, time, and budget costs. After a detailed and careful planning, project implementation plan must be written and approved prior to project execution. An example of an outline of a project document is outlined here in this example, you have the project title and key parameters, the context, description, the beneficiaries, stakeholders, development objective, immediate objective, major outputs, major activities, inputs, critical assumptions, sustainability, implementing plan, project reporting, exhibits, like the project planning matrix, the budget, then project approval documents. Now let's discuss each category in concern of the project manager and the project team. Let us start with the project scope. In session three, we discuss the initiation phase. The product or the output of the initiation phase is the broad scope of the project. In the detailed planning phase, the scope is broken down into more details. Thus, in the project scope, it contains all the work necessary to create the products or the results of the project and the processes used to create them. The table here gives us a guide question or checklist what must be covered in the project scope document. 
The table shows the guide questions and what corresponds to the scope document. The question what the project is about corresponds to the title of the project. What is the project time frame? Is the project duration and schedules of the project? What are the project milestones? This gives you the major events of the project to watch out for. How much will the project cost? How much is the budget that you are about to work with? Why should the project be implemented? The answer provides the justification of project. What are the reasons that compel us to do the project, the problems that we are solving here, and what direction should be taken to solve it? What are the goals, the purpose, and the objectives? What is the project about? The question helps you describe the major activities of the project. What is, are the product, products to be created? The answer refers to the project output service or product that will be produced during the project implementation. What are the requirements of the product? This refers to the method of collecting information with regards to the project requirements and how you will analyze this information. What is the scope of work for each product? The scope of work provides a description of what will entail to produce the product. What is the project success criteria? The question asks for the parameters that will make the project work successfully. Then what type and how many people do you need to do the work? This refers to the human resources required in the project, your project personnel. Who is the project manager? The answer provides the name and the background of the project leader. One tool that is helpful in developing the detailed project scope is the work breakdown structure. In the PMBOC or the PMBOK, the Project Management Book of Knowledge, the work breakdown structure or WBS is a structured process that produces the work list of each major project categories. In not enumerating the details into tasks, subtasks, tasks, and work packages in other components of the project. The WBS outlines the project scope and identifies the efforts required to accomplish project objectives. Having the list facilitates time and cost scheduling. The work breakdown structure is able to determine in details the work components and the task and subtask under the components. So how do we do the WBS? List activities, task and subtask for every activity. Clarify sequence and dependencies. Estimate number of days for startup, duration, and completion. Summarize scheduling. Define milestones. Define expertise. Estimate time required for team members. The list that you have done will look like what is on your screen. A list of activities enumerated in sequence. Some project software applications are available and could be used to prepare the work breakdown structure. When you list the work activities and the duration of these activities, the application automatically provides you a calendar to check on the dates and a Gantt chart that will show you at a glance the length of time and relationships of the activities with other activities. Samples of helpful uh, project applications for planning are the Microsoft or MS Project. And another is a free software application called Open Project, which is merged now with the Project Libre application. If you find commonly used software office applications such as those of MS Office or Open Office easier for you and your team, that will be all right. 
Aside from these examples, these are others listed in the Primer 2 resource book. Check it out. When you do your WBS and the sex scheduling of activities, another tool that can be helpful is the use of the network analysis through a network diagram. A network diagram provides an analysis of the relationships between and among activities and identify which one depends on the completion of others. The network analysis enables you to know the duration of subtask and also helps you analyze which tasks could be prioritized and those that you can do during slack times. In case, in case you do not have a software application that you can use to prepare activity schedules in a Gantt chart, you can create a document that provides you a table of the needed information, such as the list of activities in sequence, the duration of these activities, the dates to start and end an activity, and having these organized in a calendar, either on a weekly or monthly basis, as well as who will be responsible for each activity. A project needs to run with a budget allocated for running its activities. Estimating costs could be done after breaking down with tasks and work packages as well as the components, resources, equipment, and facilities required. It is useful to break down costs into five categories. You have people cost, supplies cost, facilities cost, equipment cost, and information over the full duration of the project. Examples of project costs and entries are shown and this table as you see on the screen. The budget categories show here, shown here are of three types. The first type is the capital cost expense budget. It is also called capex. Items under this category are one-time expenses associated with procurement and or implementation of the product or service. These include hard, hardware, software products, as well as professional services. The second type is the budget for operational costs or expenses. It is called OPEX. This time, uh, this type of uh, cost covers the salaries of full-time and part-time staff, the benefits required by labor laws, maintenance costs, utilities, supplies, required travel, and communications. The third type is the contingency budget, which will cover unforeseen costs. For example, foreign exchange losses, inflation or increases of cost of goods and services as an effect of certain economic conditions, or all others were risk conditions that could delay the project schedule. Some projects provide about 10% of contingency funds calculated from the total budget. The budget and expenses have to be monitored and accounted for at the implementation stage and later subject to audit during the project evaluation or closing stage. It should be ideal that the project manager is already on board when the project budget is being planned. It is important to verify the adequacy of the budget before implementation, even if the total budget cost of the project cannot be changed. This will help determine if there are areas that need cost cutting or realignment. Members from the project team and other people in the organization can be sought to help to complete the process. Organizational policies in relation to financial management must be observed. For example, 
a project will need to have cash available. The team will need to produce a cash flow report showing the timing of payment and receipts. A regular financial reporting must be scheduled to consistently check on the financial state of the project vis-a-vis -vis the work and milestone schedules. A cost-benefit analysis must be prepared to show the proposed project's bottom line. The main interests of project sponsors are Will the project bring in enough benefits to cover or justify operating expenses? Will the resources provided for the project be commensurate with the benefits that will be derived from the project? Quality of outputs and results must be a concern of the project team. Quality refer to the characteristics and standards that relate to satisfaction on outputs and results of products and services created or delivered by the projects. Standards in practices and conduct of activities and output metrics must be set and defined to measure performance and outputs. Quality metrics to measure project deliverable quality will be further defined by the team. For example, the ratio of positive versus negative results from a user satisfaction survey. The amount of time spent on fixing defects after a feature is considered complete. The amount of time spent on fixing defects after implementation. So these are metrics, just like indicators that we presented to you a while ago in the log frame matrix. Now, quality must be planned and controlled. It must cut across all project categories, including performance and delivery of results. A quality planning template document can be used to document and report on project quality. Now, quality management covers determining quality requirements, implementing quality assurance, processes, and the use of monitoring and evaluation to make quality improvements in the project. Questions to guide in planning quality include, how does your end user or stakeholders define quality? What performance quality outcomes are expected? How will you describe the acceptance criteria that will be used in product acceptance testing? What skills and knowledge are required? Then we have the human resource plan, which answers the question, who will do the work? A clear resource plan must be in place before, before hiring any staff or team member. Any member of the team or staff member must also be clear as to their relationships with each other and with the manager. The staffing management plan details the project human resources and requirements, how those requirements will be fulfilled. The plan will cover project roles and responsibilities, which summarize the responsibilities for each role required to conduct the project work. Project staffing estimates. It, as, it identifies estimated number of staff requirements the acquisition strategy, it describes when, how, and from what sources staffing will be acquired. Then you have a training plan. It identifies skills, skills gaps, and details uh, of specific training requirements for each project team member. You may need an org you will need an organizational chart. It displays project reporting relationships. The staffing management plan details the project's human 
resource requirements and how those requirements will be fulfilled. So, again, the project roles and responsibilities, it summarizes the responsibilities of each work required, the staffing estimates, which estimate number of staff requirements, acquisition strategy, it describes when, how, and for what sources staffing will be acquired, the training plan, which identifies skills gaps and details specific training requirements for each project team member, organizational chart, displays project reporting and relationships, role identification of each required function on the project, example, project manager, then the team, identification of the teams to which the role is assigned, planning, development systems, for example, responsibilities that describe the role and function of each member. Competency, the required, required skills or the skills set necessary for each role for the project to be successful. Then estimated start date, the estimated time when the resource will be needed. Estimated duration, the description of the length of time the resource will be required. Time commitment, will it be full-time, part-time? Description of the required time commitment of each resource. The next element is the communication plan of a project, which is about communicating communicating the intentions, the activities, and the tasks, as well as the exchanges with the team, sponsors, partners, and the stakeholders. A communication plan must be able to define the important information and messages that must be communicated, how this will be communicated and disseminated, and to whom will it be communicated and disseminated? Information must be communicated in an effective and timely manner. Consideration on the choice of the communications medium is important. We have to understand the group and the individual based on their communication needs. And also, the plan, the communication plan, the communication plan will be linked with the findings from the stakeholders analysis, the problem analysis, and the risk analysis. The procurement plan covers the goods and services that will have to be procured during the implementation phase. This is to support the activities and the tasks that have to be performed. The member of the management team in charge of procurement has to plan, conduct, administer, and close the procurement package or activities that are included in the project. The person in charge of the procurement must be aware and be guided by the policy directions and legal implications of the procurement activities. When services are outsourced, procurement documents include statement of work, request for proposals, request for quotes for bids, contracts, similar documents such as acceptance and sign-off documents. Risks are defined in the LFA. They pose opportunity of threats, uh, factors, and we need to identify this risk. Risk mitigation refers to actions that will prepare the team to reduce or minimize the risks. Risk helps the project team analyze the intensity of the risk factors. One of the assessment tools that helps identify the probability of risk and the impact of risk, to, we need to calculate the risk factors that use the probability impact matrix. 
The table, as in your screen, is a probability and impact matrix. It provides a way to assess an identified risk factor to a project. The matrix shows the gradation of the assessment with a three-level rating. Low, moderate, and high for the probability of the consequence of a risk factor. Likewise, the same level of ratings for impact will show the magnitude of the consequences, whether high, moderate, or low impact. The list of risk factors can be distributed in the boxes to show how many of the risks fall in what consequence category. Risks in the high probability and high impact back box are the most alarming and would likely impact affect the project even if mitigation measures are in place. If in the planning phase the information is already available or able to show that the project is a high-risk endeavor, you should either proceed cautiously and focus on reducing risk or do not proceed with the project at all. One example of a risk factor is losing a team member or if number of human resources is inadequate. The result is it can potentially result in missed milestones, project delays, and increased costs. This can be considered a high probability of a high impact risk factor. Analyzing the situation, the risk description is specifically described that other work commitments of the staff prevail. Example, involvement of staff in other projects. Other technology projects create staff shortages. So, risk factors must be identified and mitigated. Mitigation measures must be in place for all the risk factors. So, in the previous example, some mitigation strategies could be providing flexibility in the project schedule to accommodate other pressures, establishing communication links with other projects to identify and respond quickly to activities that can affect the project, obtain senior executive commitment to the project, and ensure that this is continuously conveyed to the staff. Identify expectations of staff in the project plan, hours of effort and scheduled dates. Also, build in known absences. Okay. The risk management plan must contain a strategy that includes the method and process of risk identification, categorization, assessment, mitigation, planning, and tracking of response. Okay. To ensure that the project manager is able to integrate all the activities of the project, she must prepare a project management plan. It serves as the guide to coordinate all the tasks, activities, and the corresponding documents that are produced in the project. It is based on the project implementation plan, of course. It must focus on the control and monitoring of project activities. It has to endeavor continuous assessment of the project, performance, and the project environment. Plan must include formal project closing. Okay. To summarize this session, the following. The project plan has to include the details on each discipline or knowledge management areas such as scope, time, cost, quality, human resource, communication, risk, procurement, and the overall coordination and management plan. These plans must be communicated and delegated to the responsible project team members for implementation so that the project manager is able to focus on the overall management and monitoring of the project implementation phase.